Can you believe it? We've uploaded a Radcast. It's been four months since we last uploaded one of these. I'm joined, of course, by Woods. How you doing, mate? Yeah, of course. Or Stephen Gerrard, potentially. Which it might be one of those two. Uh, if you're unaware of what Radcast is, it has been four months since we last did one of these. Uh, first of all, you should know, because you should have gone back and watched all of the 14 episodes I think we've done over the course of a year and a half. So that's phenomenal consistency. Uh, it's just myself, Pierce, or NFSC Woods, you probably know him as on Twitter. Go and follow him and go and subscribe to him for vlogs and that kind of thing. We're normally joined by, by uh, maybe Bray, but he is unavailable today. Can you believe it? We're at this time to do a po- podcast and one of the members can't do it on that day. Uh, but uh, yeah, we just thought, given how huge this game is coming up for Forest, uh, we'd do an episode. It's been long enough. Uh, just had a little overview of the entire okay. match and what's at stake, really. So it's kind of obvious, really, but how are you feeling, Woods? Going into this game? Well, surprisingly calm at the at the moment. Mm. When it gets to Sunday, maybe I'll be a bit more yeah. shaky. <laughs> Completely get where you're coming from. That's the same. I'm not, I've seen people on Twitter say, like, yeah, I'm I'm really, really nervous, which is natural. But right now. Honestly, I'm 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 pretty calm as well. I think the closer we get, especially the fact that it is Wembley, ultimately, it, it's yeah. You know, when we're walking down Wembley Way, it will be like <laughs> may, major surrealism and nerves. I think uh, that we're actually doing this. Um, of course, I think we need to mention how we got here. The last time we did Razzcast was in January and we were all pretty confident then that we were probably going to get the top six. But I don't think anyone would have envisioned us doing quite as well as this. But did you, Woods, did you really think we were going to get this far and, and go, go the entire way? Um, maybe. I mean, it was like... <laughs> I, would, I would have liked to believe so, but, you know... Yeah, fair enough. I, I don't quite remember January. <laughs> I don't remember yeah. yesterday, so... <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, let's talk about something more recent, though. Obviously, the uh, the semi-finals were absolutely mental against Sheffield United. Uh, first leg, you were there, of course. I wasn't. Uh, yep. It was looked like an absolutely unreal atmosphere in that away end uh, when we went to up and we were pretty much in the lead the entire match, weren't we? It was a brilliant performance. Yeah, I mean... Easily in, in that first leg, we could have had it for we could have finished the, the tie then. I mean, in that yeah. one half alone, we probably could have had four, five goals. Well, mm, absolutely, happens. definitely. I'd like to address, of course, we've got uh Woods with a green screen that isn't actually a green screen, but we thought, or he thought, let's show off Wembley, which is only fair. Um, yeah, you know, the appropriate ground for this game. Uh, but back onto the actual football, the second leg uh, was insane, really, wasn't it? The atmosphere, the game itself, and the second half <laughs> was probably one of the most unpleasant watches ever because of just how on edge we, I think, you know, all of us were. So, I mean, how, you know, how do you feel about that second leg and, you know, ultimately winning on penalties? Arguably, we probably should have lost in that second leg. Like we should, probably should have lost by a lot, but Samba kept us in it. And mm. at the end of the at the end of the day, we come out with um going to Wembley. So so you could have hoped or yeah, absolutely. And I think really we saw quite a huge thing in that game that we haven't seen before with Forest, particularly in playoffs. We've seen many times before it's been going wrong for us and. We ultimately did collapse no matter how, uh, no matter what happened, we wouldn't be able to get back into it. But I think with this game, it looked like we, the old uh, adage was going to happen again. We were going to bottle it completely. But when we, when they did level the scores, that really clicked us back into gear. And previous Forest sides have not done that. And I think actually another sign really that, you know, it is our year that we can actually do this. Um, 
you know, I think in extra time we, we did pick up a lot. And then ultimately we went, we went on to win on penalties and Ray Sanger playing an absolute blinder as he always does. Uh, incredible goalkeeper. Obviously, we have to mention the opposition. Um, we've played Huddersfield three times this season, beat them twice, lost once in the league. That one defeat, we arguably could have won about 4-5-1 because we had that many chances. Um, but Huddersfield, they played well as well, to be, to be honest. Beat them away 2-0 in the first game in the, uh, well, Stephen Reed era, I guess, but, you know, Steve Cooper era. And obviously, only, only about Six, seven weeks ago, we, we uh, beat Huddersfield in the FA Cup fifth round in what was a really good game. Well, of course, we actually did go behind. Um, how do you feel about Huddersfield? Was Are they beatable? Well, you know, who do you, is anyone that you fear in their side or no one? Well, it depends. On our day, if we're playing full strength on our day, we can beat absolutely anyone. But the problem is, we do have a few injured players, some players that are possibly carrying knocks as well. I mean, you know, mm. you had, um, I think it was Brennan, wasn't it, in that um, Sheffield United game was holding his, yeah. like you had James Garner as well holding his hamstring. There was a lot of yeah. injury worries that could have happened. Cooper hasn't said anything about it, so hopefully it isn't anything to worry about. Um, mm. But you know, there are a few injury worries that we could possibly have. And, I mean, you look at that sec the, the Huddersfield game, you had Jordan Rhodes score um, to secure Huddersfield the playoff play, uh, playoff final place. Um, I think he's – he might he might not be the best player, but he always seems to do something against us. And he's definitely one of the players we have to look out for, really. Mm. I mean – but there are also multiple other players in that team. You've got Sinani, you've got um, what's the, what's the right wing back or left? Uh, Sorbonne Thomas. Yes, Sorba Thomas as well. Yeah, you know they've got, they're they've got a very strong team. So you've got Lewis O'Brien, midfield. They, they've got one of the best defenses in the league. Mm. You know. And arguably, we've got one of the best attacks in the league, so it's really 50-50 on who you can really choose to win the game. Yeah. Yeah. And ult ultimately, I think you have to say, based off the league, but it's sort of technically favourite because they, they finished third, we finished fourth. And I do find it really fascinating that both of us had poor years last year and now we're sitting here about to play a playoff final in the championship. Now, they finished 20th. Arguably, I, I, I said they'll get relegated at the start of this season. And, you know, they've been fantastic, to be fair to them. And obviously, with Forest, you know, we were 17th. And, and now look at us. And ultimately, this season, unlike Huddersfield, they, they've been up there the whole year, pretty much. But this season for Forest started horrendously. But, you know, we all know what's happened since. It's been indescribable, the rise that we've had. And, uh, yeah, I think definitely... You mentioned Jordan Rose. Obviously, you know he's he's not a young player anymore, but he he's still probably one of the best championship strikers ever. Because he's he's been around the block a bit. He's scored so many goals uh, down the years, anyway. And you know they've got some really good players in their team. They they play a very similar system to Forest in the sense that they play three at the back, obviously with their wing backs. I think it, I want to mention Harry Toffolo or Toffolo. Uh, how he, he's actually scoring a load of goals right now, saying he's not even a forward. So I think we ought to be wary of him. However, he's going up against Brennan and Jed, so hopefully we can keep him quiet. Uh, I think we ought to mention, obviously, our own team. Uh, I think one of the biggest talking points I've seen on Twitter is who do we play up front if Keenan Davis is fully there? Do you go with Davis, who is a battering ram, or do you go with Sam Surridge? Because it would be a bit harsh to drop Sam Surridge, but ultimately I think Keenan is the better player. Now, here's where I think, I personally think what is going to happen is, I think Davis will start, but around that 60th, 70th minute mark, you'll yes. probably bring on Sam. Because then, you know, you've had, um, I mean, Surridge is be uh, like a be better finisher of, um, mm. you know, he's always in that area. He always takes his goals really well. Um, I think when 
if you look on Twitter and all that or any social media, you'll see that Davis causes a lot of fear in the opposition fans because of how he is. He's not he's not easy to push off the ball. He's he's very built, he's fast, he brings the ball down well, and he can pop up with a goal here or there. So, you know, I think I think Davis will start and then Surridge will probably come on in the latter stages. Yeah, I could see well, that happening. But she could also surprise us and decide to put um, Keenan and um, Surridge up. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean could, yeah, I, I can see that as well. But I, I think he'll probably go with Davis and bring on Surridge later on. Mm. I think the only thing that would probably make him... Mate, he hasn't played to top that often this season, Cooper. I think when uh, Dabham was fit in January and we just signed Keenan... Uh, and so he hadn't, actually hadn't, hadn't joined. He was playing both of them together, and Gavin was kind of playing on the wing, really. It was kind of a bit of a weird role for him. Um, I think the only thing that would stop him from doing that is ultimately we are, we don't have Gavin. You know, we've only got two strikers. We wouldn't really have a striker on the bench. And, you know, Brennan is, is a striker as well, really. Uh, so unless we drop one of them, we're not going to drop Brennan, are we? You know, I, I, I don't... Uh, I don't think he would go to the top. Only I, it would work if he if he did. Having said that, um, at least in terms of the, you know the system, um, I mean you know the entire team's been fantastic. But and I and this is quite a few talk, talking points really about you know what will happen if we win or even if we lose this game. But who yeah, you know, who is your player of the season? Woods, if you, if you had to pick one player, that's a very difficult decision. Well, I think it's between probably three play, uh, three or four players, I'd say. Hmm. Now, what, two of them pick themselves. Brennan and Jed, both up yeah. there, obviously. Definitely. But then I think two, two shouts also could be um, Scott McKenna and also Ryan Yates. I think they could definitely have a shout with it as well because, you know, they've played... I think McKenna's never missed a league game so far. Um, no. And Ryan Yates has been um, probably one of the most improved players in this team. I mean, uh, he's, I pers- I really, I rated him basically all the time. I mean, yeah. I, even when he was playing under Hewton, I said he's just playing the, the role that the manager wanted. And the manager didn't want to play to his strengths. And you look at how yeah. Cooper's playing him now. He's playing to him to his strengths, and we've seen a much better player um, of Yates, and I'm very happy for him. Yeah, one hundred percent. I've actually I've mentioned this before. I did a video about Ryan Yates uh, in terms of the amount of stick that he's got down the years, and as recently as this season when he's been a completely different player, which is just mental, um, and that's not often at all. I must say. Um, go and watch the video if you want to see what I mean by that. But um, we actually, I remember you and me actually did a tier list about a year ago, grading all the players who should stay and go. And we, I think we might actually do that again this season. We would make it for a good Routercast episode. Um, we both said that Yates should stay around. We never said that, oh yeah, get rid of him. Because I think some people would have done that. Um, and I, I do get the criticism that he had because he wasn't very, he wasn't the best. But I never said he was awful. I always saw the potential and just what kind of player he was or could, or could be, probably the best way of putting it. And he's just been absolutely fantastic. He, you know, he just goes about his business very quietly. Um, and yeah, I, I, I agree definitely. Jed, uh, Jono, obviously, um, you know, Yates and McKenna, I don't think has ever lost a header. Um, you know, and he's, he, there's more players as well. Like you could easily say, whoa. And I think the unsung hero of the season is Jack Holback. You know, oh, yeah. at, playing out of position, he's not put a foot wrong at left wing back. You know, like, have you got anything else to add about Jack Holback? Because he's, he's just been amazing, in my opinion. I mean, it's basically what you said. He's been playing out of position all season and you wouldn't have thought it. I mean, he's no. come in into the left back, left wing back role and it, it's like we... We've already we've always had him at left back. I mean, 
he gives 110%. I mean, in that Sheffield United first leg, he mm. played out of his socks. I don't think he he put a foot wrong in that game. I don't think he put a foot wrong in the second game. But one thing I did notice in that second game was, I think when it comes to extra time, he did start a drop off a bit. I think it was just, yeah. just he was tired, you know. Hmm. And I mean, I was saying at the time, maybe maybe he should have brought on um, Larea to put him at left wing back just to try it out in case. Yeah. In case he does need to, in case something does happen. But I can definitely see him. I mean, he's definitely going to be in that left wing back role if Max Lowe isn't, isn't fit, which doesn't seem likely. No. Um, yeah, I agree, definitely. Uh, and honestly, if, if Jack had to stay in that position, I, I wouldn't complain because he's done such a good job. And like, yeah, I think there have been times where we, we wouldn't have minded him playing in midfield where he should be playing. Um, and it, I think obviously, you know, low. And I'll talk about the lone players in a moment because it's it's a big subject, really. But he's been out a lot of the season, unfortunately for him. He's been brilliant whenever he has played. But Colback's come in and, and done a really good job. And I think another thing is the way he plays. It's not like some, you know, wing backs or full backs. It doesn't really cost the ball, really. He kind of like he gets forward a lot. But Jed doesn't really cost the ball either. Like we, you know, we when I say cross, we don't like to whip him balls from. You know, like I've seen Max Lowe do that many times, but Jack normally, you often see him kind of like just trotting into midfield because that's where he's naturally meant to be. But uh, yeah, I, I think regardless of how they play in that position, they've both done a really good job. Um, and, I, you know, we mentioned Colbat, uh, sorry, Yates earlier, how, you know, we, we weren't slagging him off, but some people were. We were slagging off Jack Colback a year ago. He definitely yeah. has proved as well. And... Um... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's proved us all wrong. I mean, I think last season and even the start of this season, I think everyone just didn't want to seem to play football because no. they didn't want to play under Hutton. I mean, when the first came, when he first came in and they first started playing, I think you got a few, you got a few good results here or there. But I think as a whole, nobody wanted to play with, with under Hutton and. It's, can't blame him. <laughs> I mean, you look at it now, we've basically got the same exact squad as we did with Hutton and we're playing entirely different. So that just shows everything about it, really. Yeah. And that's the, you know, I don't want to mention him that much, but like, you know, this is the thing. Last season, we were having to go at players like Colback and obviously Bong, <laughs> when we did play, even some players that aren't here, like, you know, Freeman knockout that kind of player but we shouldn't really mention them because they don't play for us but you know the ones that do play for us we, we were criticizing a few of them but at, at no point was it a case of like we're newly promoted so um you know which to be expected or the squad's you know terrible what do we expect we all said that the squad has the talent or it, it definitely can have the talent but it's just not being fulfilled correctly. And we've seen that in abundance as soon as Cooper's come in. He's not only embraced the entire club and fan base, but he's he's unlocked the team. And it isn't, it's not like it's just a honeymoon period. He's, you know, just a month or two away he's been good and he drops off. We've got even stronger. Um yeah, I I, I thought it was fair to mention the uh, player of the year award. And you know, be interested to see who does get it. I think I could see uh Jake getting it, to be honest, even though he's a low knee. And I think, being as I mentioned, loanies, we'll talk about that next. And we don't want to really think about this too much, but if we were, and I actually listened to an interview with Nicholas Randall, our chairman, and he was talking about this, if we were to lose the playoff final, it would be really, really sad. But it, it wouldn't. I don't think it would be disastrous because I think we would bounce back next season even stronger. But the biggest thing is, the biggest worry really, is if we were to lose, what will happen to the team and the setter, you know, we are bound to lose a few of those players, even if they're not loonies. And, you know, I just wanted to get your opinion on it. Was what, what do you think? How do you think the team will look next season if we want to go up? I mean, they already have two plans set out. They'll have, I think, Cooper and um, 
Murphy will already have two two sets of lists um, already out. Mm. I think there'll be a list for if we go up. I, I will actually think there'll be three. I think there'll be a list for we go up, a list for it doesn't matter which league we're in, we're going to sign them, and a mm. list for championship. I think, obviously, we're probably going to have to say goodbye to Brennan and Worrell and or pretty much all the loan players, but that will mean however much money we get off them, I think we could be asking 20, 25 for Brennan and then maybe fifth, maybe 15 for Joe. So that mm. gives us what? Just about 40 million to, to mess about with. Mm. Um, but obviously you also got to think about settling the books. So that could be a, le- le- a lot less as well, but you know, that gives us money to play around with and with Cooper and Murphy in charge, I, I doubt that anything bad will come from it. Mm. That this is another thing, really, that does give me confidence, you know, in recruitment is it has been on point since those two have been here. You know, with January January was, was phenomenal, I thought. You know, Cook on a free, and he's, he looks like he's been here his old career. Uh, Davis has been outstanding as Surridge. You know, we've not had Gravin the second half of the season, basically. And, yeah, you know, he got us 12 goals in the first half of the year. We've had two completely different strikers alongside Brennan, kind of, as well. And, you know, they've been absolutely vital. Um, and, I, yeah, I agree as well when you, when you mention um, how Surridge is, is, is excellent at finishing, because he really is. And then our Davis, he's not so much a finisher, but he's just a battering man. And we saw, when, you know, when he came off the bench against Sheffield, how he did definitely get us back on track for sure um you know we mentioned the low knees who do you who do you think is the most likely to stay and we'll talk about it in a positive sense you know regardless of what division we're in i think if we're in the premier league we've got a, obviously a better chance of keeping the likes of Ghana and spence i think even the championship is going to be very difficult but i think all the others we have a chance regardless of what division would you agree with that yeah, yeah i think um, I've mean I've talked to to my um my family about this before. Well, more like more my granddad. I mean, you know, you've got um Davis. I think we'll have a good shot with him. Um, I think Lowe will probably will probably sign. Mm. But it, it it the thing about Lowe is you don't know whether he's going to be fit all the time and. Mm. He's had this recurring injury with his um, what is it? It's is it his groin or something like that? Yeah, I think it might He's be his groin. Continuous groin injury where, and he, it's one of them ones where it's like if you sign him, it's like a, it's, it's a it's a hit, isn't it? You know, you've got mm. it's a chance you've got to take if you want to sign him. You know, mm. Zinc. He's been, I mean, he's he had. A bit of a spell where he weren't doing a lot. He weren't getting goals. He weren't assisting. More likely than not, you try and take on a player and lose the ball. Um, and I think he, I event, I, I did, I do think he got dropped for like a few games, didn't he? Where for yeah. um, yeah, I think uh, where we decided to play uh, Garner, Colback, and Yates in the midfield, and then obviously Lowe was available that time, so he was playing left wing back. So I think Zinc is rather than was one of them ones where it's like I think uh Watford want to recuperate as much money as from him as we as they can if they want to sell him. Um and I think if we go up, we'll have the money to back, like bring in these loan players. I think we'll I think if we go up, we'll get at least four of the five we've got at the moment. Um I think the only one that that may be is Ghana because I think United, obviously they've got Eric Tan Hag now, so it's an entirely different manager and an entirely different way of what, probably what they want to play as. And they've got different players that might be coming in. So I think it's all down to how Ten Hag, you know, wants, mm. wants their team to go out with. And I think... If they don't want 
James Garner anymore, I think we'll probably be in the front of the list to get him. Um, yeah. But it's all that. It is literally all down to Man United for Garner. I mean, I've seen reports like they want to loan him out again. So, and, um, and I've heard that if we go up, it will definitely be us. It makes sense, um, I think. But then it's like, I have also seen somewhere where it's they might listen to permanent offers as well for him. So yeah, it's it, all it's up in the air, really, isn't it? With going yeah, it, it, I think Jed, it's I'm pretty sure he, he's going to want to stay. He's going, he's going to stay if, if we go up. Mm. I think you know, you've got Davis, he will stay. I think he'll, you know, yeah. You've got, I think you've got, mm. um, got, uh, you've got Garner who will want to stay. But it's one of them ones where it's up to Man United for that. I think all of them want to stay, to be honest. Yeah. No. I, I think with Garner's friends, it's very evenly matched up who's the more likely. Because I think Jed does want to stay here. But, you know, we're seeing so many reports more recently from Spurs being interested in him. Uh, and, you know, I think he could actually get game time at Spurs if he went there. But, you know, and it's Champions League football now for Spurs. So that, that's another thing that's going to definitely entice him but I think it would be a, I had to stay at Forest we're going to be biased but if you think about it he's, he, at Spurs he's probably 50-50 really, he will play overall but if he's at Forest he's 100% playing every game and he's good enough for this division in the Premier League and I do look at our team compared to other teams that have gone up and I do think we've there's just something about our team that says we're better equipped in ways which is yeah. kind of strange when we've not been there for 23 years and even teams like Huddersfield have been there a lot more recently. But you look at their side, there's only Jonathan Hogg that's in there that was there last time. So mm. a lot's changed in their team. And, you know, this is kind of going off topic, really, but you see teams like Norwich go up and down, particularly them. And whenever they come up, they're never, ever equipped. Whereas you look at Forest, you know, look at like Norwich's centre-backs. They've got Grant Hantley, Ben Gibson, mm. Zimmerman. You know, that's not that good when you look at ours we've got wall mechanic hook figurino even I, I generally believe they're better options um but yeah more to the point how you mentioned the low knees i think zinc if we're in the championship i don't, I don't really see watford selling him because they're going to be in the championship i don't think they want to strengthen a rival but if, it, if we're in the premier league i think we've got a chance and uh with jimmy i agree as well um you know united would, would be foolish not to play him but I, th- I do think if he gets loaned out, it'll be to a bottom of Premier League side this time. And it would be idiotic if it wasn't Forest, um, which I think would make would make a lot of sense, really. Unless you've got so, anything else to say. I mean, hopefully we do go up because it for me, I mean, even my mum said it's not about the fact of playing Premier League football. It's a fact of keeping this team together, yeah. watching it progress as a team. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's like if we, if we don't go up, you'll see half the team leave, at least, I'd imagine, I think. Yeah, the really I... big players in this team will probably leave and go on to better things. And obviously, that's what you hope for. But... You know, no, my mum's mm-hmm. phoning me at the moment. One second, I'm just gonna, just gonna message her. Uh, oh, never mind. I'm just gonna decline it. My bad. <laughs> uh, sorry, mum. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's. I think that's the main focus point: is keeping this team together, keeping it playing, because you want to see as, I mean, as a club and as players, you want to see them all progress, and I mean. If we see Jed go, I'd rather see Jed and Brennan play together because they just have this bond. I mean, you look at Cash and Lolly. Mm-hmm. I mean, last season, not last season, a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. They, they had this bond that just every game kept growing and growing and growing. And I mean, mm. you're looking at now, I mean, Cash is, Cash is scoring against Villa, not Villa, City. Yeah. And... Lolly, Lolly's just not the same. I mean, yeah, 
I think Lolly's he, he looks a lot better than he, than what he was like last season, for instance. But he certainly isn't what he was like in eighteen nineteen and nineteen twenty. Um, but you know, I think he he really has improved recently. And I've seen a lot of people saying he's written from to score the winner against his old side, and he's not yeah, scored all it season. Would, it would it would make sense, wouldn't it? I mean, I mean, I I think I backed him to score. I mean, and I'd love it if he did. You know, he's been he's been one of he's not one of our own, but he's been with us a long time now. It'll be he's think grown be to be he's grown to be one of our own. If you think about it, I mean, yeah, he's definitely got ties he, to us now. I mean, he's it's like one of them things where it's like if you've been at the club for so long and you've had and you've had teams and in your prime, like Villa, your hometown club wanting you. But how much yes. was it? Like yeah. seventeen million. Yeah, I think banded around at the time. I mean, and you say and you're saying no because you want to stay. I mean, fair play to him for that, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the bit, yeah, you know, one more thing we need to mention really. Uh, you know, we, we could go on for a long time about mm-hmm. what the team might look like next season. I think in the Premier League, we we, we will keep players that we've got. We probably will sign a few players that you would never have envisioned as signing, uh, mm. to be honest. And I think if we were to go, we probably would stay up at least one season because it's always that difficult second season, isn't it? You know, what will happen? I, I, I said before that if we go up, I firmly believe that we can stay there. And because I don't want us to be a yo yo club like your Norwich and like no. Fulham and stuff. I'd rather see us be. A staple Premier League team, yeah. someone and then just who's just there, like, like like a Crystal Palace, hmm. like someone who's there every season. Yeah, you know, I mean, as long as they've been there, they've just, they've just been pretty comfortable. Apart from um, I remember when um they had when Roy Hodgson took over, they were in a dismal state when they lost like the first eight matches. But other than that, they've not really looked close to going down. Uh, and you know, this season we have seen Palace progress with. Uh, Patrick Vieira and some of the players they've got. So if we were to do something similar to that, you know, we consolidate ourselves in the top flight and then we just work from that in time. I think that would be a would certainly be, be, be better than the championship, really, wouldn't it? I mean, you look at how West Ham is at the moment. I mean, yeah, excellent. You look yeah. at it, they've they've been a stapled Premier League team for God knows how long now. Um, yeah, they've had their, they've had their relegation scraps at time to time. I mean. I think mm-hmm. what what was it? Um, a couple of seasons ago, wasn't it? Where there was, yeah, nineteen twenty, I think it was. They were like down there. They were they were in the relegation zone, I think, at one point, and then they they scrapped out of it. I mean, and now yes. look at them. They're they're they're, play, they're playing in Europe. They're they're fighting for European places. So, yeah, the Europa League semi finalists as well. Um, one more thing, I think we need to mention. The biggest one, really. What what is our predictions for this game? What do you think, Woods? I mean, I haven't done a prediction in God knows how long. I mean, I think it was Cardiff. Right. I think the last one. Cardiff away. I predicted us to win 2-0. So. Fair enough. Are you not going to jinx I've, it then? <laughs> I've, I've sworn for ever since then, no predictions. I'll say, you know, I, I'd like us to win. Of course. The, that's that. I think that's the only predictions I've ever done. Right. I'll, I'll go I've with joked, that as well. No yeah, score. I've, I've, jo- I've joked about it before, like, oh, how good would it be if, you know, you had, like, Worrell, Yates and Lolly all score in the final. Yeah. You know, but it's never been past that. It's like a... I'm predicting it. I, and I've never... I don't like predicting stuff because I feel like it tempts fate. And... Yeah. Very fair, yeah. Yeah, well, we're both going to be there. It's going to be incredibly exciting. Um, you know, 37,000 Forest fans is going to be crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. Going to do a vlog, of course. Are you, you vlogging, Woods? Possibly. Right. I think it, it, it's down to how I feel. I mean, I, I didn't record the penalties for the Sheffield United game mm. because I was just too nervous. I was... <laughs> It just yeah. got to me. Fair enough. Well, so, yeah. Well, like you'll have at least my vlog, and yeah, you know, like I said at the start, go and check out Woods' Woods' channel. He does a 
not, not all the time, but yeah, you did a fair amount of vlogs. You went to Notts County recently as well, didn't you? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go and check him out. He deserves more recognition. He's not here, but go and check out maybe Ray as well. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be four months before the next podcast. And like I said, we've actually got a few more. Well, I've got a few more ideas anyway that we can do. So hopefully we can do them a little bit more consistently over the summer, for instance. We could do transfer news, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very exciting. I think I, either way, next season, we've got something to look forward to. Uh, but yeah, if you have enjoyed this Razzcast, please call hit the live button, subscribe to Raz if you're new, subscribe to Woods, follow us on Twitter, all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll see you very soon. Come on, you Reds. One you Reds.